breathing. Very important. We all do it. And one of the things I would like to forefront is the place of breathing in your practice. Now, if you're really interested in breathing, you probably already know that I have a whole package, which is the um, elements for breathing and diaphragm practice. Um, this is an entire subject of study to itself. If you're interested in that, you can, of course, go to the website, visit the element store and the packages available there. However, there are some things that I would like to share with you if you're working with me already, which can be immediately incorporated into your physical practice as you're practicing and into your daily life. And they are extremely simple things that if adhered to and if reflected upon and checked and sustained over a long period of time, that you will most definitely notice the differences, not only in practical things such as recovery rates and also being able to perform more repetitions and um, you know, aerobic respiration, um, anaerobic respiration as well. Um, what it will also do is help change the psychological relationship you have to movement as a practice in general, in regards to your physical practice. So I'll go straight in with the perspective, and one of them is quite simply, shut your mouth and save your life. Shut your mouth and save your life. This is a perspective that was um, written by, um, I can't remember his first name, but Kathleen, who was an author and visited some um, Native, American, Native American tribes in the, early, the late 1800s, where they were just about you know, destroying stuff there. And from observing them breathing and their breathing habits, he then wrote uh, an essay called Shut Your Mouth and Save Your Life, which has been repeated in other places, but it essentially means that one of the most simple things you can do is breathe through your nose. So you may have noticed, even when I'm talking in, in different types of videos and things like this, that when I talk, my breath is always in through my nose afterwards, unless I get really excited, and then I'm like, ah. And then of course, what happens, I breathe in, it makes me feel more excited, and it picks me up, and I get this, yeah. So for me, for the amount I talk, I have to make sure that I'm regulating, and I calm myself by breathing through my nose between my sentences. This is one of the perspectives you can immediately, immediately incorporate into your practice, is first checking how often are you mouth breathing? And I'll give you a quite clear prescription. With the type of practice that we do, because we don't do any types of intense, long conditioning, you know, running and things like this, it should be never. Yeah, quite simple, don't breathe through your mouth. That's it, easy, right? Check yourself, especially after strenuous high intensity um, exercises such as back front, squat, uh, back, front, back squat, front squat, your levering, uh, your planche work and things like this. Check your breathing. Are you, after that, breathing through the mouth? It's highly related, of course, to the activation of your sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system. But what many people, I find, do not fully explore is the effect of actually having the power over being able to activate that parasympathetic nervous system, which is your, your rest and digest response, as opposed to your you know, fight or flight response, how that can be activated during your practice and how it can be used. This is not to say that in some cases we don't want to employ different types of breathing for different activities. For example, if you're working with really maximum, you know, maximum weight, you know, three, three repetitions of your back squat, perhaps you will want to give a few <laughs> hyperventilation things, but you would do it consciously in order to um, heighten and arouse yourself and also perhaps activate that sympathetic nervous system for some of the benefits that it can give. However, to sustain that over your entire practice, this is something that bec can become very detrimental. By what I mean is that your relationship to movement in general will become an exclusively sympathetic nervous system activity. So constantly associated with stress, 
which is what we see in many cases with people who have high stress office jobs. They're constantly activated in their sympathetic nervous system and then they go to a CrossFit class in which it's screaming and shouting and, <laughs> and I've already written about this somewhere else, but some of the worst horrific things I've heard, you know, in the CrossFit gyms has nothing to do with the exercise prescription or what they're doing. It's the breathing, the breathing afterwards, the gasping. <laughs> and of course it's, it's also, it's also seen as something good. You did a good job. You worked really hard. You're breathing well. It's a very limited perspective, especially if you're thinking about the, um, the physiological perspective effect, sorry, that it has on your body. So as you're practicing, shut your mouth, save your life. And what you will find is that with your mouth closed, with your mouth closed, it's very difficult to do things such as this that I am very common for doing, just this. These types of things, and of course we know there's some studies already, new, new things coming out about how your facial expression completely affects things like your, your fear response, and of course related to the, um, the two nervous systems that we spoke about. So it will bring an, an, an immediate element of more calm about your practice. And with this calm will become more of a mindfulness and even a reverence about your practice. Being able to finish your heavy ass set of five by five and at the end it's just like, not, ah! sometimes again we need this. However, the majority of our practice is one in which it goes back on the rack. Keep moving, check there's nothing blocked. And this goes for breathing out as well. Breathe out through your nose. Why? because we want to regulate the airflow and keep it constant, keeping it constant in your body. Even in those times where, for example, if you practice something like Brazilian Jiu Jitsu or other martial arts when you're in close contact and there's restriction, even when working in the handstand, incredibly important in the handstand, you have to maintain um, a tight abdominal, um, your, your rectus abdominal, so your actual abdominals, as well as keeping things sucked in. And it's been described as breathing behind the shield. Because you have this hard shield on the outside, but you must breathe. And it cannot come. And it cannot come in these types of, um, these long breaths, that, you know, very leisurely. It has to come. In a, See what I do with my nose. This is just one technique. What I do is I increase the size of my nostrils. So it facilitates the airflow, but when I've had enough air, I close it. So it regulates the airflow again, because it comes to the second point. Shut your mouth and save your life. And the second thing is breathe light to breathe right. And this is a perspective taken from Patrick McKeown, who wrote the book, um, The Oxygen Advantage. He's also a world-renowned Bateco breathing practitioner, which if you're not familiar with Bateco breathing, it's one of the perspectives that I incorporate a lot in my own breathing practice. It comes from a Russian tradition. And breathe light to breathe right basically means that you breathe as little as is required to the point where you feel like you're suffocating yourself. That's right. Until it feels like you're almost suffocating yourself. Now, this means that when you're breathing, you need to be able to calm, take minimal amounts of breath, and ride it. Ride it for a few moments until you start to feel things happen like your nostrils start to open inside. You start maybe to be, feel a bit lightheaded, but then it clears. And then suddenly you find yourself recovering within 30 seconds instead of within 60 seconds. These are some of the powerful effects that simply reducing the amount you breathe can have. I'm not saying hold your breath until you pass out. This is not what I'm saying. But there are many cases in which minimal breathing can be employed to great effect. 
These are the only two things I want to give you to employ in your breathing practice so that you know that when I say something to you in your submission feedback about close your mouth, you feel like you're trying to blow your birthday candles out. Close your mouth. Breathe only through your nose. After your set, relax, regulate yourself, bring relaxation, bring movement into your body, bring breath into your body, but in a way that is regulated and something that facilitates the unblockaging of everything that builds up in your body that's related to the tension of the activity you've been doing and also anything else that is being held within you. Apply these breathing perspectives over the months, you'll most definitely see some changes. Practice well.